Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been quite some time since I've uploaded. Um, I just haven't had time to film even though I have been crafting, you know, craft all the time. But anyways, I just haven't had time to film, but I thought I'd try to squeeze this craft in. It's going to be a paper flower tutorial. This little paper flower here. Um, I thought it'd be so cute for Mother's Day. It's a corsage alternative. Um, but actually how I came about to even do this craft is that both of my girls had teacher appreciation week at their school and one of the days was to bring a flower for your teacher and my rose bush is not in full bloom right now so I had to find kind of an alternative and I always try to find just creative alternatives maybe something that's a little bit more unique uh, something that not all the kids will do so I just and I craft all the time so I like to do paper um, crafts so um, yeah, so then I'm gonna show you how to make this today. It looks really um, complicated and really like, oh wow, that looks so hard, but it's actually really not. So what I started off with is I found a flower template online. Um, this is a peony template it says online. And I printed it out on just eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. And I was able to get four of these on one sheet. So. Um, that's what I did and then the reason why it's taped to this is that um, sometimes my printer doesn't print out on colored paper very, very well and since this is cardstock it's a lot thicker than regular colored printer paper and sometimes my cardstock is like 12 by 12 and I have to like cut it down and blah blah blah, blah. so I just I just literally taped this top one to here and so I can cut out two at a time and um, to make this I used eight petals eight flowers and of course, the more flowers you do, the bigger and fuller it'll look, but um, I think it looks just fine with eight, and this is what I did. I also printed it out on different shades of blue, so this one is going to be a blue one. And I did three different shades, so like a navy, and like a, I guess like a deep ocean, and like an aqua. And um, I find that if the shades are close together, like this one is like a peach and a pale pink, and the shades are pretty close together, and I think it looks really good like that because it kind of is like a natural gradient to it. Like in nature, you know, flowers are not all one color, but that doesn't mean that they're like yellow and pink at the same time. Um, but really, you can do whatever you want. I made one that was white in the center with orange and pink. Um, I did make ones with different varying shades of yellow that were more drastic. So it's really whatever you want, whatever matches your theme, whatever color um, the person you're giving it to likes. And also, um, this one I made into like a corsage so that the teacher could pin it onto their shirt. So these little corsages corsage pins I bought at Joann's and it actually comes with uh, a self-adhesive sticker on the back. So, here go. so it comes like this and then you just peel off this yellow bit and it's like a sticker. So it's like sticky here. So then I just attached it to this but I have also made them into like gift tags. So instead of the corsage pin, I have put like a ribbon and I used it to tie it around a gift bag. Or even without the ribbon, you can just affix it to the gift or bag or whatever. And it's such a cute um, decoration. So like I said, what I did was is I printed the flower template onto a colored paper. And I think you can use, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can use any shape flower you find. Um, I just chose this one, the peony, because I like peonies, but I think any shape flower template you'll find, you can experiment. And um, you need about eight petals, so then I already kind of cut some out, and this is my last one. And like I said, I just taped it on so that I could just cut two at one time. And the good thing about doing like nature crafts is that you don't have to be so, so precise about following the lines because for the petal here it kind of has intricate details in the petals there's a lot of curvatures and sometimes it is a little bit hard to you know cut every single line but that's a good thing about nature crafts is that nature is like perfectly imperfect and not Every single petal has the same lines or the same um, curve to it. I mean, of course, you don't want to like 
disregard the design of the petal completely, but if you can't cut exactly so close to the line, it's totally fine. And I think it adds to the dimension of the flower. So all I'm doing here is just cutting it out. And the reason also that the reason also why I taped it was because I could just hold both sheets and cut it. But I find that sometimes the bottom one will slide. And then you kind of get the bottom one kind of ends up like a weird wonky shape. So I'm almost done. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, if you look here, um, there's there are really intricate kind of like details. Let's see if I can focus it. There we go. There are kind of really intricate curvy details to each petal here. And I did try to really follow close to it, but instead of making like just a round shape, but like I said, it's sometimes really tricky to kind of cut so close and so intricately. So, you know, just do your best. And also I didn't cut, I didn't cut this part yet all the way through. I did on one side just so I can have some place to go from here to here but I didn't cut it all the way through because I find or I found after making you know a dozen or so of these that it's easier to cut into the slits after after the um, border is all cut out so now I'll go in and I'll just you know cut it to the center and I find that it's much easier to cut that little piece out and to try to handle it as an entire piece. And I think that's one thing that I've learned after all these years of doing scissor crafts is that cutting away the excess saves you so much frustration because it's really easier to, you know, handle a small piece of paper. And even when you do cutting with kids, sometimes the kids get frustrated because, um, the excess paper is like getting in the way and they can't, they're having a hard time like maneuvering around the paper. So sometimes um, I've seen teachers and I do this myself, um, you'll just cut away the excess and make it as tight to the shape as possible and it's easier for them to cut. So here you go, I cut it out. I'm just gonna separate it like this. And while I was cutting, I noticed that this scrapbooking paper has like a logo. So what I'll do is, uh, I'm going to curve these, so what I'll do is I'll use this piece as my center piece, my very center here, that way I can press the petals really close and close it, that way you won't see this part. So after you get all of your petals made, um, take a bone folder, this is just a Martha Stewart bone folder, um, I think they still sell it in Michaels, but I bought it years ago. Why I like it is um, it's like a bone folder so it has a very um, sharp beveled edge here and it's used for not only scoring paper but also for sharpening the edge that you fold. Um, so just like how you would um, peel a piece of fruit, that's kind of how I hold it. And then I just scrape the petals forward and curve them like that. And you don't have to curve it so much because we're gonna do another step that makes the petals go inward, but you do have to have a certain amount of curve. Like that, see? And we're gonna do it to the rest. And this is the kind of thing where you kinda have to be forcefully gentle. If you are too harsh, like you pull too hard, you can accidentally yank the petal off, which I have done a few times actually. Uh, but if you don't pull hard enough, then you don't get like a really nice curvature. But even if you pull a petal off, don't worry. Like I said, I have accidentally pulled like one petal off or so. And I just used that as a center one. Or I just used it as one of the inner pieces because you'll see in a minute after we curl these all, the petals will overlap each other, so if you're missing one, it won't it won't really matter. If you're missing two, on the other hand, that, that will produce a gap, but 
since we're just missing one, you don't have to throw it away. So like I said, I'm holding the bone folder like I'm holding, like I would hold a paring knife, and I'm just scraping the petals inward to create the curve. And because the bone folder has a beveled edge, it's really easy to curve the paper. It's kind of like how you curl uh, curling ribbon, but I've not tried it with a scissor, so I don't know if it'll work. I assume that it will. It will. I guess I could try it. I'm just afraid that I might actually like cut the paper. Oh no, it works. Yeah, so if you don't have a bone folder, you can do it with a scissor. Maybe a smaller pair of scissors than the one, than like the standard ones that we normally use. Okay. So, see here that I curled all of the ends of the flowers. Okay. And then the next step, it took a little bit of engineering for me to figure it out, but so in order to achieve this closed flower, um, Look, you have to roll, let me just show you actually. So this is just felt, pieces of felt. I, I bought them pre-cut at Target, they come in a pack, but if you have um, felt at home, just just layer two pieces of felt. I put a piece of just plain old printer paper on top, like that. And this is actually one of my daughter's lead pencils, and the reason why you need or you don't need this lead pencil, but you need something that looks like this, that has a ball on the end. So if you have a ballpoint pen, if you have a fondant roller, I think there's a tool in the fondant, um, a cake decorating tool that you use with fondant that has this type of shape. I just happen to have this uh, lead pencil. So you need something with this ball tip. And it's about, I think, a quarter of an inch ball. So what you do is you place one of your flowers on the on the felt and on top of the paper. And then you press and you roll. And as you roll, the flower you see will curve inward. The petals will curve inward. Like that. Okay. Do it again. So you take your ball and you press. Kind of like the, the more forcefully you press, the more tighter the petals kind of come. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that the petals curve inward. Like that. So obviously, the more you score and curve the petals with the bone folder to begin with, if you have a deeper curve, for example, like this curve is pretty deep and high, then when you roll it, it'll be a tighter fold. You see how this one is very in. So you can adjust kind of the shape of the petals and the shape of things like that, depending on what you do. Um, so, build the flower so obviously if you see here the outer petals are more open and as you go into the center they're more closed so I want to use the one that I had the little label on I'm going to use this one the one with the label on I'm going to use it as my center so what you do is you kind of just make sure all the folds are kind of um, overlapping in the same direction and then you press it together and for the center one, what I found helps to keep it closed is to actually squash it. You know? I know it's kind of scary to squish paper because then you get a crease, but you kind of want the crease so that it'll stay folded. 
or else it keeps opening up and it doesn't stay nice and closed. So you just kind of fold it like that. And this is going to be my very center one so that nobody sees the little label that was on the inside. So, okay, so then we start building the flower and I find that it's really up to you, like the order in which you want the colors to go. And um, sometimes it just takes a little bit of experimenting, but I find that just as in nature, the centermost petals are usually the darkest. So I'm gonna use this one as my outermost one. So I'm just gonna actually open it like this. So it still has the curve, but I'm gonna open it like that. And then I'm gonna add maybe this one. Then I'll add maybe a navy one. And as you build up the layers, you just open them less and less. And that way you get the uh, closures to be tighter on the inside. And then I'll add this one. And sometimes if you end up with ones that are the same color, it's fine. This one here in the middle. And that one actually I didn't even really have to open at all because the space in the center is not that big. And then this one I'll squish a little bit just so it'll fit in the middle. And then I'll add the one that I made the smallest. Okay, there you go. And then what I like to do is after I put it all together, I kind of, you know, edit <laughs> it a little bit, you know, just the areas in which you feel like it should be a little more open to make it more balanced. Open them up a little bit. And then there's what it looks like. Now I'm just going to glue it together and I just use tacky glue. You can use hot glue if you feel like you want it to be a little bit more secure. You can use a glue dot, but I find that it's hard to get the glue dot in the center when there's not enough space. But tacky glue works just fine. I think another thing that I kind of learned uh, about paper crafting is not to be afraid to kind of be f a little bit forceful with paper, especially when it's cardstock and it's more of a heavier weight. Um, because if I want this petal to be out, if I just like, you know, go like this, obviously it's not going to stay out. But if I kind of press it out, then it will, you know, stay out a little bit more. And before I used to be like, oh, I don't want to rip it, or like, you know, once the paper creases, you can't uncrease the paper, but there is a certain degree of, like, flex and bendability that, um, especially cardstock does have, so don't be afraid to kind of manhandle the paper. This one more piece here. really great like I said corsage alternative for Mother's Day um, bridal shower you know if you have bridesmaids gifts or baby shower maybe for the mommy to be you know it's just something fun you know it's really great springtime gift topper like I said I made these for my daughter's teachers for them to wear as a corsage uh, for teacher appreciation week yeah, there you go. You glue it all together and it turns into this really cute flower. And then you can always like squish it all together, you know, kind of shape it as you go along if you feel it needs a little more shape. And then for the leaves, I just take, you know, green cardstock, whatever green cardstock you have. Standard happy green for this one. Cut out two 
two petals. The same thing about flower petals too is that they're all different, so you don't have to worry too much about them being exactly the same. I just tried to make one bigger than the other, just so when I lay it on, it's a little bit more detailed. So I am going to glue dot, glue dot this together like that. Put a glue dot on the entire thing on the bottom. And I'm just gonna fix it like that. And there you have it. Beautiful little paper flower. So cute. that was it for this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys um have a wonderful mother's day and enjoy making crafts um this upcoming season and i'll see you guys next time thank you bye